welcome to the Modern Homesteading Podcast. We have allowed ourselves to become so disconnected and ignorant about something that is as intimate as the food that we eat. Be prepared to grow your own for victory. I said I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to yean lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink foam pullets who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadowlark. So God made a farmer. Hello and welcome to the Modern Homesteading Podcast. I'm your host, Harold Thornbro, and I'm glad to have you here with me again today, uh, this week. And today we're going to talk about squirrel hunting. And you know what? There may be some better uh, homesteading topics out there we could discuss, but uh, well, squirrel season started here uh, just a few days ago, and I haven't had a chance to get in the woods yet and hunt the little bushy-tailed critters, and I'm going to be going in the morning, so it's what's on my mind. I'm sitting here at, uh, see, what is it, 1020 at night recording this, and I'm going to be getting up bright and early and um, doing some hunting, and I'm just excited about it. I love to get out there and hunt those uh, hunt those squirrel and i'll tell you it's a great way to provide a lot of meat for your homestead to put in the freezer so um yeah we're going to talk about all things squirrel hunting today but before we get into that i'll just give you a few updates around the homestead here uh i told you a couple weeks ago we hadn't had any rain for a long time around here and it's been real hot and things were really dry and and uh, well we finally got some rain probably more than we needed for sure uh it's been raining a lot but it needed it and the garden's looking good and uh, things are really taking off again growing real well and things i was about ready to yank out of the ground and give up on um just kind of came back to life and are looking great so uh had a bunch more cucumbers and beans and i finally got around and went through my uh, little grape vineyard and started taking out some um, grapes and uh, made some grape jelly uh, earlier today matter of fact and uh, that's looking real good can't wait to dive into that and um been making lots of zucchini bread, <laughs> freezing that, and oh, so much of that yellow crookneck squash. If you ever want a crop that will just just keep giving and keep giving lots of food, I mean, it does take up a lot of space. But I'll tell you, I've got I think five plants of yellow crookneck squash, and we have picked so many squash from that. And uh, I've been blanching and freezing some, and uh, we've just been uh, eating eating a lot of it too uh, in different ways so it's been great it's been a great crop to have around here but yeah things are looking really good um and i'll go ahead and tell you uh if you haven't already and last week's podcast i talked about it uh come on over on facebook to our new facebook group called the homestead front porch we're having some great discussions over there lots of people in there talking about all kinds of homesteading tips and tricks and what's going on on their homestead and and uh, learning a lot and uh hearing a lot about other homesteaders it's just been a great group i i've been uh, having getting a lot of inspiration and motivation from that group so i i really want you to come on over and join it's a, it's a good time so i uh, hope to see you there at the homestead front porch just do a search on uh, facebook for homestead front porch facebook group or you can go to the website at smalltownhomestead.com or go to modernhomesteadingpodcast.com and you'll see the link to the uh, the facebook page there um, okay, let's just jump into our topic today. Let's talk about squirrel hunting. This will be kind of a squirrel hunting 101 today. If, if you, maybe you've never done it before, uh, maybe maybe small game hunting is something that's new to you and you'd like to get into it, but you're not real sure what the first steps are to take. And we're just going to talk a little bit about that. And I'll just tell you uh, some of the reasons I love squirrel hunting so much. One, it's just got a lot of action. I mean, there's just... So, I mean, you get in the woods, it's not like deer hunting where you could sit for days and maybe not see anything. Uh, squirrel hunting, it, it, most of the time you're going to have a successful hunt. You may only get one or two. You might come out of there with a bag limit. But uh, very few times have I went to a woods and came home empty-handed when going squirrel hunting. It's just a, it's a real fun time. And, I mean, I've been in there and in a couple hours you hit your bag limit, you know, and go out the next day and do it again. So it's just, you know, it's a, it's a great uh, hunt with lots of action but i'll tell you the thing i think i like most about squirrel hunting it just it just gives me flashbacks of when i was a kid you know the first hunting i ever did was squirrel hunting you know my dad took me out we had to you know maybe i wasn't a crack shot back then but i had one of them new england uh, single shot 410 shotguns and 
you know, I don't know, I was probably 10 maybe, and uh, he dragged me out there in the woods, and we'd squirrel hunt, and uh, it was a good time, me and him and my brother, and, and um, you know, I just, I remember those times, some of the best times I ever had uh, growing up was spending in the woods with my dad hunting, and uh, so, you know, hunting squirrel has a lot of memories for me, so I really, really enjoy it. And I just love being in the woods. I mean, I just love just to walk into the woods, sit on a log or a stump, and just kick back and just, you know, let the woods kind of settle down and the birds start chirping and things start jumping through the trees. And the next thing you know, you you got a squirrel. So, and you know what? That I think that'll be the first tip I'll give you. It doesn't have to be complicated. I mean, it really, squirrel hunting can be as simple as a gun, a woods, and sitting down and, and just waiting. I mean, it can really be that simple. But we'll talk about, we're going to get into a little bit more detail about uh, squirrel hunting. Let's let's talk about first the equipment. You're going to, you might need some of the equipment, the options of equipment there are out there. Like I said, not everything is something you need, but we'll talk about some different things here. Uh, let's talk about guns first. I mentioned that I started out with a 410 shotgun. A 410 is a great uh, weapon. It's a, it's a great uh, gun to take squirrel hunting. They're great for a couple reasons. Uh, the accuracy isn't quite as important as a rifle, and uh, you know the ammunition doesn't travel so far, so it can be a little safer than a than a rifle in some circumstances. I love the 410 shotgun. Yeah, I don't use one for hunting small game much anymore. I like, but I like shotguns. I like the kick. You know, the loud bang. Uh, <laughs> just some things that make a man grunt. You know, it's just it's fun. You know, and it's a good it's a good gun for. For kids, it's a good gun for for women too. Uh, a smaller woman who doesn't want to shoot a bigger gun, you know, uh, a four ten shotgun is a great shotgun, a small shotgun. There is some downsides to using a shotgun though. Uh, when you process a squirrel, you're going to have to be careful to remove all the uh, the shot that's in the uh, that comes out of the four ten shell. Believe me, you don't want to bite down on a piece of steel shot at the dinner table. It it hurts. Trust me, I know. I've done that before. So you got to be careful to get all those pieces out of the squirrel uh, when you uh, when you clean it. The most common gun for using for squirrel hunting is a twenty two long rifle. It's the one I, well, it's the one I used to use more often. I'm, I'll talk about that in a minute. It's the one I used to use more often. It, it's probably the perfect gun, really, for hunting those uh, hunting those little trapeze artists in the woods. Um, the downside of the 22 long rifle is that you will need to practice to get good and accurate with it. It's, it's, a, it's one bullet. It's, it's not, it doesn't have a spread pattern like a shotgun. It's a small bullet and you're, you're shooting at a small target and, uh, usually at, at a pretty good distance too. I mean, you're shooting in the treetops a lot of times, but Hey, you know what? Like I say, it just gives you a great excuse to go out and target shoot, right? Uh, get good at it. So there's really no downside after all at all. <laughs> And it because that is the gun I've most commonly used to go squirrel hunting. But recently, as in last year and, and this year too, um, I started using a different gun. I started using the twenty-two caliber air rifle. I bought a Benjamin air rifle, uh, really, really nice twenty-two caliber. I love this gun. It's a single shot, which is a downfall, um, you know. And, and until you know, last year I'd never really even considered using an air rifle because I remembered those pump, you know, pellet guns when I was a kid. And, you know, they would kill a squirrel, but they wouldn't shoot the kind of distance that, that these guns today will do. I mean, nothing like it. They're just not the gun. They're not the air rifle I had when I was a kid, that's for sure. I'd have to pump that thing a whole bunch of times. And like I said, it just didn't have the range that this uh, that this rifle that I have now has. And if you want to see that rifle, a uh, link to that rifle, I'll put a link in the show notes for you. Um, it's a good gun. It's a really good gun. I really enjoy it. Like I said, they're not the uh, they're not the, the twenty they're not the air rifle of of thirty forty years ago for sure. And, and I'm gonna tell you what, it's a great gun. It's a great gun for squirrel hunting. One of the I think one of the biggest advantages to that gun is ammunition. I mean, you have a lead you have a steel or lead pellet. I'm using the steel pellets. It's cheap. I mean, you buy five hundred of them for just a few bucks. And if you've priced twenty two caliber long rifle bullets lately, uh, you know those are starting to get expensive. They've been expensive for quite a while. Um, shotgun shells, I mean, they're not crazy expensive, but you know, if you're going to go out and practice and target shoot and things like that, it can get pretty expensive. But you can shoot these air rifles all day long, uh, real cheap. So the ammunition's cheap. You know, they're they're 
they're a little quieter than a twenty two long rifle. I wouldn't say it's much quieter though. They, the air puts out a pretty good sound. It's a pretty good thump. Uh, so it's a little quieter, but it's not it's not real quiet. Some disadvantages of this rifle. These air rifles are heavy. I mean, they're long. I mean, it's like a four over four foot gun. It's it's really long. It's really heavy, and it's a single shot. Those are some disadvantages, and you might not think about weight. It's just one gun, how heavy it could be. It's pretty heavy. If you carry it around all day long, it can get, you know, if you're out there for several hours, I mean, of course, you know, if you're like me, you might just go sit on a log and lay it across your lap, and, you know, not you're not like you're just carrying it around all the time. But it is a heavy gun. It surprised me how heavy it was. And it's got the breakdown barrel. It takes a single, uh, single pellet at a time. But the accuracy on this gun blows me away. I mean... Uh, the one I I have came with a great scope. Just a, it's just a great air rifle. I'll, I highly recommend it. I'm really really satisfied with this air rifle. So again, if you want to check it out, uh, go to the show notes. I'll have a link in there for it. Something else, another piece of equipment you might want would be some uh, calls. You, you might want some squirrel calls. You either a squirrel whistle or a uh, a, a bark call. Um, a couple different kinds. I use the bark call. Well, I used to use the bark call. I, I'm going to do it pretty good with my mouth uh, anymore. Do a squirrel bark, so I don't really need the uh, the call. But if you're not good with doing it with your mouth, you can you know take a uh, take a call with you. The this, this this whistle is more of a distress squirrel whistle. It'll a lot of times it'll pull them out of the treetops to see what's going on. Uh, I I prefer the bark the bark call actually. And you can sit there and just kind of tap on. It's got a little rubber um, diaphragm on the back of it. You just kind of tap on, and it uh, makes a bark sound. And uh, yeah, you might want to check those out. Uh, they they work. They'll draw a squirrel. They'll get a they'll get a squirrel chattering with you, and it's easy to find them because you can kind of locate them by their bark. And you can literally sit there and have a conversation with a squirrel just back and forth. And they will you'll chirp. You know, bark a couple times. They'll bark a couple times. And you'll just gotta, gotta go back and forth. I've I've done that many times, so you get quite a conversation going on. <laughs> Another um, piece of equipment you might want to consider having is actually clothing, and that is a, um, a hunting game vest. Now these are real nice because they got the place for your ammunition, um, and they actually got bags kind of built into the body of the uh, of the vest that you can just kind of stuff the squirrels in there after you shoot them. And just carry them around on your inside your vest, and it's nice. Most of them have a removable, uh, the pocket removes, and you can take it out and wash it out, get blood in there and stuff. But they're real nice to have. It's just a vest you just put over your clothes. It's got the orange on it if you need the orange in your state. So you'll you'll be uh, obeying the uh, laws when it comes to wearing hunter's orange, and uh, just a great great vest. I'll have a link to one of those in the show notes as well because. I don't see a lot of hunters uh, using those anymore, and I love them. I mean, you can, yeah, you can absolutely just carry your squirrel around or take a bag with you and carry them around, but those vests are really nice. And um, it just keeps things kind of low profile. You're not carrying around a bunch of extra stuff with you. And um, you kind of keep the squirrels tucked in there. So, yeah, you might want to check out a hunting vest. Well, let's get into the actual process of hunting squirrel. There's, there's some different methods uh, some things you want to know about about hunting squirrel, and depending on where you're located, the weather, and you know, quite frankly, your mood. <laughs> there are a couple different ways to hunt squirrel, and one stalking. Um, this you can stalk squirrel if you're good at it. Uh, you can't just go tr- trotting through the woods making a bunch of noise. They'll see you coming. They'll hear you coming. They'll hide. But if you move, you know, gracefully and quietly enough, and you're not scaring them away, you can hunt this way. And the advantages to hunting this way are that you're, you know, you're constantly moving into new locations where more squirrel are at. So you have opportunity to come into contact with uh, more, more game. You know, also it's just a fun way to hunt. I mean, you're moving, you're doing something, and especially in the winter time, you know, keep you warm because, you know, if you've been out in the woods hunting in the winter time, just sitting in one spot can get pretty cold. So it's nice to get get the body moving and, you know, concentrate on things. And you know, on a really cold day, it's nice to stay moving. So, um, yeah, I mean, stalking's, stalking's fun. It, to me, I don't have as much success with that as the next method, which is just sit. <laughs> I mean, it's simple. Uh, this method, I think, will increase the chances of a successful hunt if you do it well. And what I mean by that is you got to sit quietly. You can't make sudden movements. And if you can do that, the, the woods will get peaceful and things will start, birds will start flying and chirping, squirrels will start chattering they'll start moving and jumping through the trees 
and you'll just see the woods come alive. You really will uh, when you just sit there for a while. If you've ever noticed that, you walk through the woods, it's like you don't see a lot of things going on. But if you sit for a while and get quiet, the woods just comes to life. It really does. And when you're sitting, it's actually a lot easier to uh, look into the trees and become really acutely aware of any movement or noise, and it really helps you zero in on the squirrel. So, um, yeah, it's a great way. It's the way I prefer. I just like to go in and relax, chill out, and just wait for them to start moving around and look for them. And it's a lot of fun for me. And, you know, I'll use a combination of both. I'll usually shoot one. And I'll go get the squirrel, and I might move on to a different location and kind of stalk over to a, another part of the woods real slowly. And then I'll sit there a while, and if I shoot another one, I'll probably try to go get that one and then walk around to another place and kind of sit. You can sit in one spot. I've shot, I've shot my bag limit sitting in, in the same spot in one day before. I really have. Um, but, you know, sometimes you get a little bored and you want to move around and, and just go see some new sites. And it's fun. It makes it a lot more fun. But that's what I usually do. Though. I usually don't move until after I've taken a shot and dropped a squirrel. And then I move. Unless I'm just not having any luck in one spot, then I, I might get up and start stalking and, and move away. So there's just a couple different ways you can uh, you can hunt squirrel. Now, spotting squirrel in the, in the early season, like now, when there's lots of leaves on the trees, it can be a challenge. Um, but what you're going to look for when at this time of the year is you're going to look for bouncing limbs and shaking leaves high up in the treetops. And this will just kind of help you pinpoint uh, where they're at. And you just got to wait for them to come into the clear for a shot. They'll run out on a limb or start coming down the side of a tree, and that's when you'll take your shot. Um, now, seeing them after the leaves have fall, fallen in the later season, it's real easy. Uh, when the leaves are gone, um, you're just looking for movement. But I'll tell you, their fur blends pretty good in with tree bark, and it does make them kind of hard to see if they aren't moving. So you, you just got to look for movement. But you'll start seeing them come across the limbs or coming down the side of a tree and, or moving across the ground. They'll go from tree to tree through the, on the ground sometimes. And, uh, yeah, just look for the movement. That's how, you, that's how you spot the squirrel. And no doubt, early early season and early fall, it's, it's a challenge. It really is a challenge to, to see them outside of the, you know, the leaves and such because they, um, they really do hide pretty good. But they don't stay up there forever they come down they get nuts or they're, they're gathering for winter so they'll come down the sides of them trees eventually if you just sit there long enough and uh, be quiet enough now let's just talk a little bit about um, hunting regulations and safety reg regulations and stuff i think in most states you're going to be required to take a hunter safety course uh, before you can uh, get a small game license, unless you're grandfathered in like I was. I, I didn't actually have to take one. I'm old enough to where they just consider like a grandfathered in. Um, I did actually take a hunter safety course when I lived in Tennessee when I was a, in, in high school. Now, I live in Indiana now. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll, there is a, a, a website link. Uh, it's uh, hunterscourse.com slash USA. And uh, I'll put that link in the show notes as well, and it kind of gives you information on different hunter hunter safety courses in each state. If your state's not listed in there, you'll have to just contact your state uh, Department of Natural Resources office and find out what you'll need to do to get a license. Because I think most states do require a hunter safety course now if you're under a certain age. So you may have to do that if you've never had a license before. One of the main things you need to remember, though, safety-wise, when you're hunting squirrel is that you're shooting up much of the time and bullets from a rifle can travel quite far so so try to shoot when there's something behind your target that will stop the bullet i mean that's that's what you gotta you gotta consciously think about that shoot when they're on the side of a tree you know like facing you or you know in a place where there's trees behind the limb that you're shooting that'll probably catch a bullet if, if you do miss and you may have to wait. You may have to wait for a squirrel to start down the side of a tree before you take a shot. Uh, safety first. And it's not just a catchy phrase. It's it's real. And and even a twenty two bullet shot at an angle up in the air can travel quite a distance. And, uh, I mean, the, the chances of that bullet coming down and hitting somebody in the woods on the other side somewhere are slim. Very, very slim. But not impossible. So you always got to keep that in mind. And also, uh, you, you, need to, you need to be aware of your state's rules and regulations for hunter safety, such as uh, the requirements for wearing uh, safety orange clothing. Like here in Indiana, where I'm at, we're not required to wear it 
until uh, it starts uh, conflicting with um, deer season or gun the gun uh, shotgun season for deer. You don't have to wear it during the archery season, which when the archery season comes in and where it's kind of overlapping there, you don't have to have it. But when the gun season starts, you do. So there's certain times, certain dates where you do have to wear the orange and other dates that you don't. So you need to be aware of that for your state. There's also regulations on when you can start and stop hunting during the day, like at certain like a half hour before sunrise, half hour after sunset, things like that. Different states have different uh, regulations. They also have regulations on walking into a woods or out of a woods or even having a weapon loaded during those times. Um, so make sure you know what the laws are. Uh, have your weapon unloaded at the proper time because those are serious laws in, in some states. So you want to make sure you're obeying all your state regulations on that. Just make sure you're aware of all the rules for your safety and also because you know, it can be costly if you get caught doing something wrong. So you don't you don't want to lose your gun or your hunting equipment or, you know, something like that um, because some states uh, have the right to take that stuff from you and um, if you get caught breaking some of these laws. So make sure you obey the law and know your laws for your state. Well, let's talk about um, field dressing and processing squirrel. So you had a successful hunt. You bagged your limit. Now what? You have to clean and process your meat, right? And I got to admit that skinning a squirrel is not my favorite part of hunting squirrel, but it's necessary. They're, in my opinion, one of the harder animals to skin. Uh, Not actually skinning them, but I think the hard part is the fur. That fur sticks to everything. So you got to be real careful to have your hands dry and try to keep the fur you know, where it's not touching the meat, the hair from touching the meat. Because once that fur gets on that meat, it's hard to get off. It it just, it just gets all over it and it's really hard to get it off there. So you just want to be careful about that. And I found a couple different ways. There was a way I used to do it. The way I always used to do it was I used to make a slice in the back and the middle of the back width wise across the middle of the back. I just get my hands in there and just pull apart. Sometimes you can get two people and just get a grip and just pull it from each direction and skin it. And I did that for years. And then I watched a YouTube video of a guy skinning one coming up behind the tail and making a slice there and then just putting his foot on the tail and grabbing the back legs and pulling it up and pulling the skin right off of it. And I tried that and got pretty good with that. And that's actually a little bit quicker of a way to do it. And I prefer it now. So, um, yeah, look around on some YouTube videos if you need to know how to, to skin a squirrel. Because uh, there's a couple good ways. Both work well. I think the, the slice behind the tail and pulling up on that that way actually works better and quicker for sure. And you're going to need a good knife. Um, get you a good skinning knife for this. Uh, and a good skinning knife, you know, it's got other applications. It's not going to be just for the squirrels. It's going to be for deer hunting or any, any other game you're going to hunt. You're going to need a good knife, a good skinning knife. And you're also going to want to know how to, to cut the squirrel up in sections for cooking. I mean, you can cook a whole squirrel. I mean, you can bake them or do things like that, but they're kind of tough. I like to cook in different ways, but I actually like to, you know, partition the squirrel out into sections and cook it in different ways, different things, the legs, the, the back straps. You know, you got some different meat cuts there, just like you would on any animal. So it's nice to kind of partition that, that squirrel out. And here's the thing. Squirrel, like anything... It's all about the end game, and the end game is cooking it. If, if you know how to cook a squirrel good, you're going to love squirrel hunting all the more because you're going to love eating those squirrel. And uh, there's just there's some great recipes out there. I mean, one of the most common things to do is just what? Just like you would fried chicken, just fried squirrel legs are great. And I'll tell you what's really good. You, you know, batter them up just like you would, you know, flour and stuff. Throw them in a skillet with some oil, fry them up, and... Uh, just like you would a chicken legs or something, make you some gravy with that squirrel meat that's stuck in the pan. Oh my gosh, there's no better gravy than squirrel gravy. I'm telling you, squirrel pan gravy is good stuff. So yeah, try that. I've also just been making use of the slow cooker, cooking squirrel lately. Uh, We do a couple different things. You just throw them in there and cook them, put some vegetables in there with them. And uh, just slow cook them for hours with some potatoes and carrots, just like you would any other meat. It's really good. And and the meat uh, is a little tough anyway. I mean, squirrel, squirrel meat, I mean, these things are, you know, tree acrobats, right? I mean, they're jumping all over the place. they got some strong muscles. 
And you want to break down the fibers in that muscle, so a slow cooker is the way to do that. You, you put them in a crock pot or a slow cooker and just cook them for hours at a medium temperature or even a low temperature, and it'll really break down the fibers in that meat and it'll just make a great meal. So, yeah, just throw them in a slow cooker and cook them. Now, something else that we tried a couple years ago, and we've done it ever since, was making some squirrel barbecue. We just put the squirrel in, in, in the crock pot, and just cooked it for several hours till the till the meat was just falling off the bone. We went ahead and shredded that meat off the bone, put it back in there, and put some barbecue sauce in there and made a squirrel barbecue. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was so good. And uh, you, I think you'll like that too. Um, another good one uh, you might want to try is just bake squirrel. You know, you can just uh, take some squirrels and, and put them in the oven with some uh, you know green pepper, some onion. Um, some mushroom soup, a little salt. I mean, you can look at some recipes, just a baked squirrel, and just bake it like you would you would uh, any other kind of meat in the oven with whatever your favorite things are. And, oh, my gosh, it's really good, really good. You can also make a squirrel country sausage. I found that recipe online uh, a while back, and, man, that's a good recipe. Um, you take uh, four or five pounds of squirrel, a tablespoon of sage, two pounds of fresh seasoned pork sausage, two teaspoons of basil, one onion, three teaspoons of margarine, three cloves of garlic, one tablespoon of chili powder, four tablespoons of fresh parsley, one one tablespoon of black pepper, two tablespoons of salt, one teaspoon of thyme. You want to debone the squirrel, chop it in a food processor, mix together with some fresh pork sausage, and you mince up the onion and the garlic. You cook the onion and the garlic, and you kind of saute it, and then you start mixing the, the... the meats in there with it the onion the garlic and the herbs as well and then you just season it up with all the other stuff you have there and oh my gosh you make these little patties and you can throw them on the grill or whatever and oh my gosh you can put it on pizza put them in some eggs with an omelet or whatever oh it makes a great sausage you can mix it in with some sausage but you're really taking that meat and and kind of doing something extra with it and it's really really good so there's just a few ways you can cook up your your uh, squirrel it may help you really enjoy your hunt like I said, shooting them, shooting them's fun. Eating them's fun. The stuff in between, cleaning them, even 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 cooking can be a little. You know, if you're not a if you're not a professional cook, I've gotten to where I really don't mind uh, cooking that much. I kind of like it. It's just one of them homesteading skills I'm starting to really enjoy. But I'll tell you what, squirrels some good eating if you cook it right. It really really is. And uh, hey, I tell you what, I think that uh, if you can get into squirrel hunting. It's going to be something that you'll uh, you'll be doing the rest of your life. You'll have tons of fun doing it. And you know what? You're going to put many, many pounds. I mean, you can put hundreds of pounds of meat in the freezer, squirrel hunting, if you want. If you like, if you like to eat squirrel, and uh, it's a good way to stock the freezer up, and, and, and it's a real good asset to the homestead having that kind of meat in the freezer. And uh, I think if you cook it right, try out some good recipes, squirrel hunting will be something that you'll definitely want to keep doing on the homestead so there you have it kind of a 101 on squirrel hunting and uh i tell you what uh if you get out there and you shoot a few squirrels especially if it's even your first time maybe getting out there doing some squirrel hunting um drop us a drop us a comment on the on the podcast show notes here i'd love to hear about it how how your hunt went i'll be posting some pictures of some squirrels i'll be uh, shooting this year i'm sure from time to time and uh you know there's other small game but uh, squirrel hunting is always going to have my heart as my favorite small game so Hey, enjoy it. Get out there. Have a little fun. Don't forget, head on over to our uh, Facebook group, the Homestead Front Porch, and join in on the discussions there. Head on over to iTunes and uh, leave us a rating and review. We'd love to have you do that. And, uh, you know, head on over to the website, smalltownhomestead.com. Browse around at some of the articles. Like I told you last week, you get me once a week on the podcast, but we're dropping articles or something just about every day over on the uh over on the website and especially at the facebook group we're definitely in there every day uh having conversations and having a good time so um hey it's been a pleasure being with you and uh check back next week and see what we got going on and until next week happy homesteading thanks for listening to see the show notes for this podcast or listen to other podcast episodes go to smalltownhomestead.com There you can also read our blog, connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, and take advantage of the many resources we make available to help you along in your homesteading journey. 
Please share this podcast and help us to carry out our mission of helping others to homestead today for a better tomorrow. Thank you.